A shutter is a mechanical device inside of a camera that exposes film or an electronic sensor to light passing through the lens for a controlled period of time. Shutter speed primarily refers to a focal plane shutter found in professional grade photo cameras, while shutter angle refers to a rotary shuttle found in motion picture cameras. No matter the type of shutter, the speed or angle of the shutter is the way in which the user controls the exposure time. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the differences between the shutter speed and the shutter angle of your cameras and I'll also explain how to convert between the two. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking, and to help grow your business through something called earned media exposure, which is basically through free advertising. If you like what you see, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome all of your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. Before I begin, I wanted to note that the shutter speed or shutter angle is not the same thing as the frame rate, which is how many frames are exposed per second. The frame rate is the speed of the film or video being captured and or played back, whereas the shutter speed or angle is the exposure time of that film. With that, let's get into it. Focal plane shutters are used in film, DSLR cameras, and mirrorless cameras as well. Photo cameras use a variety of shutter types. However, cameras with interchangeable lenses primarily have focal plane shutters. A focal plane shutter is a shutter that is located directly in front of the film or sensor in the focal plane. A focal plane shutter is comprised of a front curtain and a rear curtain. The curtains are separate from the mirror, which is commonly mistaken as the shutter and is in DSLR and film cameras, but not in mirrorless cameras. The mirror, which reflects the lens image into the viewfinder, moves out of the way before the shutter exposes the film. To expose the film or sensor to light, the front curtain moves up and the rear curtain moves down. Once the image has been properly exposed, the front curtain closes, followed by the rear curtain. While one curtain can do the job for most exposures, two curtains are required for fast exposures. The mechanics aren't fast enough with a single curtain. For fast exposures, as the rear curtain is beginning to open, the front curtain is already beginning to close. This leaves only a small horizontal slit for the light to pass through. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. How fast a focal plane shutter moves is measured by what's known as shutter speed. 1 60th Shutter speed means that the shutter exposed the film or the sensor for 1 60th of a second. Slower shutter speeds, like 1 30th or 1 15th or 1 10th or whatever, expose the film for longer stretches of time. This allows for more light but produces an image with motion blur if the subject is moving. Faster shutter speeds, like 1 250th of a second and even up over 1 2000th of a second or more, allow less light but effectively freeze the motion. DSLRs that film video measure exposure time by the shutter speed even though the video mode doesn't actually utilize the physical shutter to expose the frames. Motion picture cameras use a rotary shutter. In a motion picture camera, each frame is exposed individually just like a photo camera. This sequence of frames shown at a fast enough rate creates the illusion of motion. For a motion picture or film camera, the frame is exposed, then the film must be advanced through the gate to expose the next frame. In order to advance the film, the shutter must be closed, allowing the film to advance without getting exposed to additional light. If the film advanced while exposed, the light would streak vertically along the film and blur the image. Unlike a focal plane shutter in photo cameras, a motion picture camera has a rotary shutter, which is a semicircular mirror spinning in front of the film gate. 
A 180 degree or half circular shutter exposes the frame for half the time. As the shutter spins, it blocks the light from the lens and the film advances. When the shutter spins out of the way, a new frame is exposed and then the process repeats itself over and over again. Shutter angle is measured in degrees. When we measure the shutter angle, we're measuring the slice of the rotary disc that exposes the film to light like the slice of a pie. Normal shutter speed is half of the frame rate. Since a circle is 360 degrees, a normal shutter is 180 degrees or one half of that 360 degree pie. So, if the film advances every 1 24th of a second, which is common for film, but is only exposed to light for half that time, it's only being exposed for 1 48th of a second. This means that a 180 degree shutter angle is equivalent to a 1 48th shutter speed, which is why 180 degrees is the de facto standard shutter angle for a film that is shot at 24 frames per second. A few conversions of shutter angle to shutter speed that you might encounter are a shutter angle of 360 equates to 1 24th speed. But this is not possible when shooting film at 24 frames per second because you would be exposing the film the entire time. A shutter angle of 180, as I mentioned, is 1 48th speed. A shutter angle of 1 44 is equivalent to 1 60th. A shutter angle of 90 is equivalent to 1 96th speed. A shutter angle of 72 is equivalent to 1 20th speed. And a shutter angle of 45 is equivalent to 1 1 98th speed. Unlike photography, it's not common practice to change the speed of the shutter to compensate for exposure when you're shooting film. Changing the shutter angle will drastically change the aesthetic of the film and it's usually shot the same all the way through for consistency. There are examples that break this rule, however. For example, the D-Day scene of Saving Private Ryan was shot with a narrow shutter angle to replicate the look of newsreel footage from that era. Additionally, cinematographers will film with a narrow shutter angle during action sequences to reduce motion blur. Digital cameras usually have an electronic shutter. Most digital cameras with CMOS sensors do not require a physical shutter to expose the image. The exposure time is still referred to as shutter speed or shutter angle and the camera is said to have an electronic shutter but there's no actual shutter to speak of like those seen earlier in this video. Instead, the sensor converts an optical image into an electronic signal. Because there's no film to advance and the sensor can expose on or off at will, there's no reason to block the light from the sensor with a physical shutter. Sensors that do not require a shutter allow for exposure times equal to frame rates, something that's not possible if the shutter must close and open in between frames to advance the film like I mentioned earlier. While many DSLRs still have mechanical focal plane shutters to assist in exposing for photos, the shutter opens during video mode and an electronic shutter takes over. This is also true for mirrorless cameras. Since a consumer level DSLR or mirrorless camera are primarily used as photo cameras, video mode on them still refers to the exposure time as the shutter speed even though it's technically not correct. Other high-end cameras refer to exposure time as shutter angle, which, as we know, is more appropriate for motion pictures and when you're probably going to use higher-end cameras. Either way, shutter angle and shutter speed mean the same thing in the digital realm for most of us. They are simply using a different language to describe the same principle. So, how do you convert from shutter speed to shutter angle? If you find yourself in the situation where you need to convert from shutter speed to shutter angle, here's the equation that you need to use to do just that. Frame rate per second times 360 degrees divided by the shutter angle. 360 degrees, or the number 360, is used because, as I mentioned, it's the degrees found in a circle and rotary shutters are round and they spin in circles. For example, 24 frames per second with a 180 degree shutter angle, like I mentioned before, would equate to 24 times 360 divided by 180 equals 48, or a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. 
To convert from shutter speed to shutter angle, you use the same equation, only this time you divide the angles so the equation looks like this. Frame rate times 360 degrees divided by the shutter speed. So, for example, 24 frames per second at 1 48th of a second shutter speed would equate to 24 times 360 divided by 48 equals 180 or a 180 degree shutter angle. And if you want to convert anything else, just plug in your numbers in the formula I gave you and that is exactly the conversion between shutter speed and shutter angle. Now, if this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, how have you used shutter angles before? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,600 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos, and particularly your videos, to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques, such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing in under two hours and includes more than 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that get you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from firsthand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike pay ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you, as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done many other videos on filmmaking and video production, and I'll link to those in the description below. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in myself. It's not a public group like my business Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's public and anyone can see that because I want them to be able to find me in my business. You'll find the link to that group in the description below. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.